Hey guys, Jermaine here from the i Quadrant. Based on the recent comments, I realized a lot of people here are also very new to property investment, just like how I started many years ago. So today, I've decided to re-upload one of our videos that is used for our internal community. The video is on the foundation and basic terminology of property investing, as well as things that you might actually need to know to start off in your property investment journey. So as you go along, you will find that the jargons are a little bit more digestible, which will also help you to understand our deeper strategies. So enjoy this video. So today, I'm going to cover terminology words that every investor must know when it comes to property investing. Let's go! Number one, PSF. Now, whenever you want to buy a property, you want to compare whether it is expensive or it is cheap. And you know, property has all different sizes. So in order to have the same unit of measurement, we take the property price divided by the unit area. And so let's say your property is 500,000 and your unit area is 1,000 square foot. You get the PSF of 500. Number two, LTV. It simply means loan to value. How much is the percentage that you can loan against your property price? So for example, your property price is 500,000 and you can loan up to 75%. So which means to say your down payment is only 25%. Number three, mortgage. When you borrow money from the bank, every single month you have to pay your monthly mortgage. There's two components inside mortgage. Number one is interest. Interest is the money that you pay to the bank every single month. The second one is actually called principal. And principal is your money that the bank temporarily keeps with them until the day you sell off your property. Number four, loan tenure. How many years you can loan from the bank? In Singapore, the maximum loan tenure is 30 years. The longer your loan, the lesser mortgage you gotta pay every single month because you stretch out that loan through the period. Number five, asset-based lending. Means they simply look at your assets to lend you money. So what are considered assets to the bank? Things that are liquidable. For example, cash, they love it, okay? Gold. Okay, stocks listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange and fixed deposits. So looking at all these, the bank decides that they will loan you a money. Number six, income-based lending. They look at how much income you earn and they decide how much loan they should be able to lend you. Number seven, notice of assessment. So the bank requires you to provide this document that you usually pay with IRAs. So it tells you how much money you have been earning through that particular year and you submit it to the bank for loan requirements. Number eight, OTP, offer to purchase. This is when a serious buyer gives an offer to the seller saying, I really want to buy your property. It's a legalized document. Number nine, also OTP, option to purchase, which means after the seller actually accepts this particular offer, She'll give you an option to say, okay, you can buy my property at this particular price. Number 10, in principle approval. You go to the bank and ask the bank how much money will they loan you based on your income or based on your asset. Number 11, additional buyer stamp duty. After you've bought your first residential property and you want to buy your second one onwards, you need to pay ABSD. This applies for all residential properties. For industrial and commercial, there is no ABSD at the moment. Number 12, seller stamp duty. If you want to sell your properties within the next three years after you've bought it, then you need to pay seller stamp duty during this three years. This applies to all residential and industrial, but not commercial properties. Number 13, stamp duty. So you need to pay stamp duty whenever you buy any sort of property. 14. Haircut. If you are self-employed or you have a variable income, the banks will see you as having an unpredictable income. As such, you take a 30% haircut and only assess 70% of your income when taking a bank loan. 15. Credit Bureau Report. All of us have a financial history and inside this report, it shows what loans have been taken in the past 12 months and we paid our bills on time and also do we have any credit card bills. 16. Total Debt Servicing Ratio. In short, TDSR. The government's regulations state that we can only borrow up to 60% of our total income. Which means to say if you have an income of $10,000, we can borrow up to $6,000 on a monthly repayment scheme to the bank. Number 17, cash flow. After receiving rental, you minus off all your expenses inside your property. For example, property tax, management fees and 
also your monthly mortgage. The cash flow is the remaining amount that gives you your income every single month. Number 18, capital appreciation, my favorite word. So um, when a property price, you bought it at this price and then it appreciates over time, right? The difference over here from the price that you bought it at and you sold it, that is the capital appreciation. Hope you guys learned something from this video and this can ease you in the understanding of big words and jargons in property investment. So do watch out for the next few videos as we share more in-depth strategies, tips as well as the criteria of buying an industrial property in Singapore. See you guys! Bye!